Hi family, Peter Odion Ipuga in the building. I'm super, super excited about the opportunity to be live today. It's the 21st day of December 2022. The Lord is glorified even today. Now, I wonder how incredible God is. <laughs> I spent, I'm spent. i spending my first um, Christmas in, the, in North America. And then we've had to experience some real extreme weather conditions. I've seen minus um, 34 yesterday. My goodness. My goodness. Minus 34. Incredible. Incredible. So the Lord is actually inspiring us today concerning um, fellowship. Is inspiring us today concerning fellowship. It's important that we place priority on the opportunity that he has given us to supply. You know, he wants us to supply strength, grace, abilities. And that's why he has called us to enjoy fellowship. We are the body of Christ. I was talking to a sister just now. And um, I got her to understand what God means by having a people become his body. God actually enjoys um, the way distributed to us even today. The body of Christ, we are people that are ordained by God. Um, we... Just a minute. We are ordained by God. We are um, Holy Spirit enabled. We are enabled by the Holy Spirit. And we bring scriptures to pass. <laughs> I'm super excited about that part of the story because that's what makes us who we are. That's what makes us a chip of the same rock that forms Christ. Christ lives his life to bring fulfillment to scripture. So we in turn, we also live a scripture fulfilling life. That's what it means to be the body of Christ. So in fellowship, God has the opportunity to see us grow in the knowledge of the truth. He wants that we are saved and he wants us to come unto the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? What is the truth? Yeshua is Lord. <laughs> Yeshua is Lord means Christ has the opportunity to express himself. Christ has the opportunity to reign on the earth. And he does that through the body of Christ. He does that through the church. He does that through the fellowship of the brethren. Now, when I mean these brethren, I am not talking about a denomination. I'm not talking about people practicing Christianity. I'm talking about a people who are one. They are in Christ. So you know what when the scripture says, he that is in Christ is a new creation. Creation is a new creature. Is a new creation. We are in Christ. It means we are sharing in that Christness. We are sharing in Christness. And how is Christness expressed? When the Word has become flesh. So ultimately, we become a people that are the spoken Word of God. This is very vital and we must embrace it as the truth because it is the truth. God has given man the opportunity to live a life that completes the sermons of the prophets. This is who we are, the church of Christ. And we have been given the opportunity to gather together so that once in Christ, we can begin to carry out the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry has everything to do with establishing the reign of Christ. Remember the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28. We start from verse 16. When scripture tells us that the disciples, they went to Galilee to a mountain where the Lord had appointed them. You see, before he went to the cross, he sent his disciples to go to wait for him at a mountain. And scripture tells us that when the disciples came to him, when they saw him, when he came to the disciples, they went to the mountain, he when he resurrected, came back to meet them on the mountain. 
And then when they saw him, they worshipped. Scripture says they worshipped. Some of them doubted because, I don't know, maybe they felt it was an apparition that they were seeing. But the ones that could see him worshipped. So you see, it's very important in fellowship for us to place priority on worship. Very important. And worship, most of the time, acceptable worship, has more to do than just singing songs to God. Acceptable worship here is tied to the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach. So the moment you see the glorified Christ, fantastic time to worship. And while they worship, the Lord said to them, the first thing the Lord did was to declare his post resurrection status you see before he went to the cross he um he faced the enemy on the on the mountain of temptation and that's where the enemy told him to bow down that the word has been given to him he's going to give him things if he bows down just to worship but after he resurrected him you will see that the world is no longer in the power of the evil one the world is no longer the property of the evil one the world and the ordering of the nations has been given to christ and that's why yeshua comes and declares his post resurrection status he says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me fantastic premise upon which he sends us out from the mountain all authority in heaven and on earth that covers the authority of your president, the authority of the United Nations Secretary General, the, the authority of um, the World Economic Forum, the authority of the Chinese Communist State, Communist Party, the authority of the Sheikh of Dubai, the, the Crown Princes in the Arabian Kingdoms, the authority of your traditional rulers, the authority of your politicians, the authority of your presidents, all authority, that's authority on earth. Now, authority in the heavens, the authority that demons use, that principalities use, powers use, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly realms. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to the Lord Yeshua. The Lord Yeshua came out emphatically, declared his post resurrection status, and upon that, he sends his church out. What did he say? Therefore, you go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all whatsoever I have commanded you. He says, I am with you all the way until the end of the age. I've taken quite some time to break down this great commission. You see, as much as it's very important much of the Christian church have not dissected it. We have not even started to engage the Great Commission. Why is that the case? Because we have not come to the knowledge of the truth. We have not come to the knowledge of the truth, so we have not prioritized the fellowship. We have not prioritized that communal association, which the early church demonstrated. We have run our empires, personal businesses, where you have a man of God speak to a congregation Sundays on end, and there is no posturing for the church, no positioning for the church to deliver on the Great Commission. How sad it has become in many climes. What I'm talking about is the predicament in the first world nations. It's also the predicament in the third world nations. We have seen a people run along claiming to be the body of Christ, but they have despised the place of fellowship. In their churches, they don't have fellowship. They don't sit down and fellowship fellowship share they don't follow the model and that's why the great commission has ever has become ever the more or all the more obscure in their eyes the lord yeshua hamashiach sent us on an errand and says we should go and make disciples he says we should go and make strict adherent followers of the teachings of yeshua hamashiach he gave us teachings he taught us about meekness he taught us about forgiveness. He taught us about his policy. I've seen the book of Matthew chapter 5 as the policy statement of King Yeshua Hamashiach. All his teachings has held up in the Gospels. And he says we should go and make disciples. So the ministry of the church, depending on the post-resurrection status of Yeshua Hamashiach, 
and our right to operate in his name we have one agenda it's a numeral uno agenda for the church among the nations to make strict adherent followers of the teachings of yeshua hamashiach so whatever yeshua hamashiach says about love whatever he says about forgiveness whatever he says about meekness whatever he says about the purity of our hearts whatever he says about sin mm, my goodness they we should now teach the nations we should teach the nations his commandments we should teach the nations his sayings so the work of the ministry is tied to nation building we have to get the nations to be obedient to the sayings of christ that's why in romans chapter 1 verse 5 a scripture i love so much christ um apostle paul says that grace and apostleship has been given to us to secure obedience in every nation the goal is to secure obedience to the faith of yeshua hamashiach so the faith of yeshua hamashiach is for government you see faith is god's governing tool when god wants to lead a people he gives the people the ability to deploy faith the faith of yeshua hamashiach is the faith of god's highest government god has a government on the earth and the son typified it when he says i can of my own do nothing but the things i see the father do the things i hear the father say so we're seeing a relationship between the father and the son the son attendant to do the will of the father ultimately being in christ is being subjected submitted to the will of the father that's where we have taken that's the yoke we're taking that's the interpretation the toga that we are receiving and that's what we are taking out to the nations god reconciles the world to back to himself in christ and then god gives us the word of reconciliation so that we can plead to the nations as we are promoting the policy of christ so you see the the the, the office of an ambassador very important here we can take the policy of our king the teachings of our king the sayings of our king the commandment of our king to the nations and then we can there therefrom advance his reign go and make strict adherent followers of my teachings go and make strict adherent followers of my commandments go and make strict adherent followers of my toga my interpretation of life go and take it out go and make out of the nations go into the world and make disciples of all nations this is a mandate for the church assigned to all nations is the mandate for the universal church that means the church in china has a goal to make china a disciple the church in america has the goal to make america a disciple the church in canada has a goal to make canada a disciple in other words we want to make canada a strict adherent follower of the teachings of the king who has been given all authority in heaven and in earth fantastic fantastic so this defines the poise the position of the church throughout the church age we are to move from nation to nation advancing the reign of christ the story has not ended he says baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost to baptize here means to immerse baptism is gotten from the word immerso immerso so you want to completely lower the nations in water many people say it's water baptism when they hear baptizing they say we'll be like john the baptist baptizing people all over the place but here is even more important god is talking about us helping our respective nations find their place in his agenda to lead the agenda has he has sustained this agenda the agenda has been sustained through the dispensations as the father 
God defined his agenda to lead as the children of Israel. You see him leading these people, his own, his own inheritance, as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. As he's leading them, he's communicating plans and programs for the advance, excuse me, of his reign baptizing them in the name of the father has shown you that the reputation of the father is the leader of the nation you see this capacity to lead which is the hallmark of the gospel is sustained with the son the son back in the book of matthew chapter 4 we see him say to the disciples when he was sorting out his disciples he says come follow me i will make you fishers of men so you see followership here, strict adherent followership, discipleship. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Son. As the Son leads, the Son communicated plans and programs to the people. Health plan, he communicated by healing them of all that were sick. Um, a life insurance plan, we saw him how he raised up um, um, Lazarus and Jairus' daughter, and he tells us that those that believe in him shall not die. So there's a life insurance plan that ends with the communication of immortality for believers. We're looking at immortality on this earth. Once we have locked in to the scripture fulfilling life, that is the life that is everlasting because the word that you are fulfilling is everlasting. That's a sign that your name is written in the book of life. He wants us to baptize nations in his plan. Help nations find their identity in his plan to lead on the earth. Allow me to announce that Yeshua HaMashiach is here to promote the Father's plan to lead on the earth. That is the goal of the gospel. That's why it is the gospel. Because it gives an earth for the meek to inherit. Life on earth can be abundant life on earth if you and I embrace the teachings of Yeshua HaMashiach. We embrace the gospel of the kingdom that Yeshua preaches. Because in this case, as he is communicating his plan to lead, he is serving the nations with plans and programs. You see, this desire to lead continues even through the church age in the dispensation of the holy ghost scripture tells us that as many as are led by the spirit they are the sons of god so you see baptizing the nations in the name of the the this holy ghost here yeah. the father the son and of the holy ghost is helping the nations find their place in god's agenda to lead once the nations have subscribed to god's agenda you and I become much like our Lord who communicated plans and programs from the realms of the Spirit to all nations. Especially at a time of food shortage, we will communicate God's own sustenance. My goodness. So I want to believe that preachers of the kingdom, so long as we have embraced fellowship, we can help ourselves to find new vistas that relate to how we can excel in the ministry that God has called us. At the time that the nations are bedeviled by pandemics and pestilences, we have a health insurance plan. At the time that the nations are standing before the emergent world system, the new world order, and they are promoting human transhumanism by um, the deployment of science and technology, at a nanoscale, we are promoting our life insurance plan. So much to live for even now because scripture talks about these things. The time is coming that the, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. And then the body of Christ will excel in her ability to depend on the grace of God to deliver on the great commission. Ultimately, he says we should teach them to obey whatsoever he has commanded us. So the commandment that Yeshua has given us is not just for the body of Christ. The commandment is for all nations. 
we have been given the work of the ministry, the ministry of reconciliation, so that we can secure obedience to the commandment of Yeshua Hamashiach among the nations. So I'm bringing a proposition, and it's been my proposition for the last 17 years. Is it a crime if um, the United States of America have made love their new legislation? Is it a crime if the police force no longer become or operate as law enforcement agents? Is it a crime if through the ministry of the church assigned to America, all the states in the United States of America will embrace a program given or um, presented to the nation by the church who have chosen to live in obedience to her king? Is it a crime if the, the, the police, for example, have bought into new love advancing programs, love advancement programs, to change the philosophy of their policing? Is it a crime if that becomes the case? Is it a crime if people are arrested in your state, in your country, for not carrying out love-motivated actions? Is it a crime if the, the tenets of righteousness, justice, and truth are promoted as a matter of legislation? This is what God sent the church to present to the nations. This is the Great Commission. This is the Great Commission. The goal is to ensure that the nations have lined up and they are in obedience to the reign of Yeshua HaMashiach. The goal is to secure obedience. And you see, this it is something that we have not done. We have not faced this agenda. We have not delivered. Why? Because we have been... Um, have been in a different era. We have turned from the commandments that Yeshua has given the church and we have faced the practice of Christianity. We have practiced a religion that does not promote the reign of Christ. We have practiced a religion in every nation, both the first world and the third world, that have completely rejected the reign of Christ. We have accepted democratic systems and democratic model of government that has shoved out righteousness, shoved off righteousness, we have actually built nations outside the presence of God. And that's why our family systems are broken. Sin has become a reproach to many peoples. It has become the case why we have, we have rejected righteousness. We have resisted the reign of Christ. Somehow, we have submitted to the chief goal of the enemy to resist Christ's government. If you go through scriptures, you will see that the early church were fascinated about their new king. So much that they moved to the end that they turned the world upside down. In Acts chapter 17 and verse 6, we see the allegation leveled against the church that they had turned the world upside down. They were all guilty of treason against Caesar. Ha! Ah, my goodness. They were guilty of treason against Caesar. They, were, they had the audacity by the help of the Holy Ghost that gave them courage to go into the Roman Empire, into a socialist system. And they declared the allegiance, their allegiance to another king, one Yeshua. You go through Acts chapter 17 from 6 and 7, you recognize that this early church, they were defiant in their allegiance to their new king. That means the gospel to them was a government model. My goodness. The, go the gospel today, to them was a new system officiated by a new king enabled by the Holy Ghost. My goodness. These people, they faced persecutors. They faced the guillotines. Many of them were beheaded. They were martyred, persecuted from place to place. But their, their resolve to advance the government of righteousness was unabated. My goodness. These ones, they ensured in Acts chapter 19 and verse 20, we see that the world grew mightily in Ephesus and prevailed. We see that people who had in time past submitted to the worship of deities, they submitted to the reign of the word. The word that was promoted this time is the word of the king. Wherever you saw the believer, the word of the king was there. 
that's the days these are the days that i'm calling for for us to return to i'm making a call for christians now because christians were not even facing a a monarchy we are not facing a socialist or a communist system we have embraced the democratic system with democratic ideals that gives freedoms of worship freedom of religion and we have become so bland and disconnected from the great commission this is why i'm making this call trying my best as i depend on the grace of god to call out a people call out a people that will finally become the church of christ in the nations we are talking about this agenda we are talking about this mandate there is no way we can deliver it without enthroning the place of fellowship fellowship what is fellowship what do we mean by fellowship what do we mean by fellowship let's see the meaning of fellowship what is the meaning of fellowship fellowship is a relationship of interunity amongst believers that expresses itself in outer co-participation with Christ and with another in accomplishing God's will on earth. I will say it again, I'm reading it out here. Fellowship is a relationship of interunity among believers that expresses itself in outer co uh, co-participation with Christ and with another in accomplishing God's will on earth. I will reiterate, fellowship is a relationship of interunity among believers that expresses itself in outer co-participation with Christ and with another in accomplishing God's will on the earth. What's God's will here? To secure obedience amongst the nation. The Great Commission is God's will. If there's anything to go by, we must return to the place of fellowship. We must return to the place where we have a, an, an inner unity relationship. A relationship of inner unity amongst believers i want you to see that this is a relationship amongst a people who god has ordained the holy spirit is enabling and they are one they are with one accord they are in one place they are not divided by religion they are not divided by denomination they are just believers that relate with themselves and inter unified relationship that is expressed with an outer co-participation with Christ in the things that they do they are seen to be participating they are co-participating with Christ and the believers what is the goal they are advancing the agenda of Christ of God on the earth the Lord has defined fellowship for us in first Corinthians chapter 14 verse 26 it has to be in this relationship all of us have all things in common all of us have one joint focus all of us have one joint goal the best way to see this is territorially all of us have one joint territorial ambition it's our great commission we have one mission to see that Christ must reign in our land this is the pedestal the foundation for acceptable fellowship the same is not the case in the christian church because we don't care whether christ reigns the christian church has run as much as they have run built their big buildings but our communities are broken why 
prevalence of sin has ruined, wrecked our, our states, our cities, our towns. The gospel is preached to towns, and in the preaching of the gospel, there is a mobilization of the church to deliver on God's will. But this happens on the pedestal of fellowship. So fellowship becomes the smallest interaction between believers. We are fellowshipping together, sharing our graces, anointing, strengths, sharing our gifts, so that the house can be united, strengthened, and we can deliver on God's agenda. Now, this fellowship, God has ordained that it follows a stipulated format. And people who are given to apostolic ministry must recognize that there is an apostolic format for fellowship. The same does not happen in the Christian churches. Because the you see, the Christian churches, is the, the setting is Antichrist. The clergy laity setting is Antichrist and it renders the condition for acceptable fellowship null and void. What do we have in the Christian church? There is an elevated clergy speaking to a congregation. The congregations are not allowed to fellowship with themselves. The, the church fellowship does not happen in the Christian setting. Why? That's how the Antichrist ordained it. And because fellowship does not happen, the church assigned to our cities, we don't have a territorial ambition. There should be a territorial mission to secure obedience in that particular place. But we must come down to our fellowshipping units. We must have the same ambition, the same goal, the same focus. Okay, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. Thank you, Father, for the reading of your word. Open these words today and cause us to see the glorious things that you have ordained for us. In the name of your son, Yeshua, I pray. It says, how is it then, brethren, when you come together? Listen, he's not saying if you come together. He's saying when. That means there is a certainty that you will come together. I have defined you as my body. And the body is nothing without fellowship. So when you come together, when you come together, this is what should be each time you come together. This is the order of your meetings. Every one of you had a psalm. Every one of you had a psalm. There must be a sound of music in your mind at all times. So when you come together, come with that sound, that spiritual sound you are making in your mind. Everyone had a doctrine. My goodness, doctrine, teaching, doctrine. Everyone is a teacher because the Great Commission requires that we teach all nations. What have you learned about Christ? Bring it to the meeting. What have you learned about this gospel and the responsibility to advance the reign of Christ in your land? Bring it to your meeting. So long as you have been plugged into Christ, you have become the new creation, God is obligated to talk to you, to teach you 1 John 2.27 again, another scripture I love so much. The anointing that you have received of him abides in you. And the anointing is supposed to teach you doctrine. The anointing is supposed to teach you all things. So as a believer, you must depend on the anointing. So that when you go to your gatherings, you have what to give. Everyone must come with a doctrine. So it will be out of place for you to meet a believer and say, man, what is the Lord teaching you now? Please share with me. That's the foundation for fellowship. This doesn't happen in the Christian church because it's only the chief pastor, the apostle emeritus, the prophet general that is ordained 
to pe to teach. <laughs> the same is not the case. The same is not the case with the typical Christian church. And this is what the Lord is saying. Everyone, each one, had a doctrine, had a tongue. Each one had a tongue. But brought into newness. A sign that you have the Holy Spirit is that you begin to speak with other tongues. Each day, for a lifetime, we're supposed to be speaking and praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit. Each one had a tongue. Each one had a tongue. Very important. Each one had a revelation. We have been born again to plug into the, the life of God. We are active in our mind. Our spirit man is active. So from time to time, like waves of an ocean hitting on the banks, God is inundating the banks of our hearts with revelation. Each one had a revelation. It's not a crime if you go into your church gathering with revelation. While growing in my knowledge of these things, the Lord told me that revelation is a step ahead of, this, of the coming of the enemy. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. The revelation is the standard. So if a church will succeed in any place, the church succeeds by revelation. If a church will excel in any location, the church excels by revelation. Each one must come with revelation and had an interpretation. Many people think this is an interpretation of tongue. But you see, the ministry of interpreters has become very important in the gathering of the saints. In the book of, um, I think it's Second Chronicles, when the Lord talks about First Chronicles chapter 12, when the Lord talks about the camps of Israel coming together to meet David, David's men, it talks about a breed of people, people in the order of the sons of Issachar. They were the ones that understood times and seasons, and they knew what the, the Israel ought to do. This is a family of interpreters. Who are interpreters? Who are interpreters? There are people who have understanding of the scriptures and how the scriptures apply to circumstances. Interpreters are people that can judge. They are people that have discernment of, you see, not just scriptures, but they have discernment of circumstances because they are in touch with the unveiling of scriptures as they are fulfilled in Christ. Interpreters, Job chapter 33 and verse 23, we see where scriptures talk about the, the scarcity of interpreters. Job, when he was by receiving the ministry of some of his friends, one in the name Elihu, it was Elihu who said, if a man has a messenger, if a man had an interpreter, one amongst a thousand, that will show him his righteousness. Interpreters are people that can give instruction in righteousness. They can give instruction in right standing. Why? Because they understand the pattern to which scriptures are fulfilled. Scripture says each one should have an interpretation. Revelation must come with interpretation. Teaching must come with interpretation. Interpretation condenses these things. And people hear and say, wow, interesting. This is how we must go. They are instructed in righteousness. How does it happen? From the ministry of interpreter. The ministry of an interpreter or the ministry of interpreters. I saw a powerful uh, ability that uh, uh, um, Apostle Peter displayed. When the church was born, let me say when the church is born, he took an interpreter, Peter, who got up with the eleven and said, these men are not drunk as you have opined. 
For this is that. That's interpretation. An interpreter is he that can trace the spirit-inspired events and happening, can trace it to scripture. Ministry of interpreters. Interpreters are those that know the lane, the streets that Christ is using to manifest. Interpreters. Very powerful ministry. Very powerful ministry. We see Peter displaying the interpreter's anointing again at the house of Cornelius. He had barely finished speaking and the Holy Spirit fell and then Peter could trace whatever God was doing, trace it to scriptures, say, wow, indeed, God is not a respecter of persons, interpreters. The ministry of the interpreters, very important because it is only through interpretation that we can know what strategy the church will deploy. Scripture talks about the manifold wisdom of God, many sided application, right and timely application of the knowledge of Christ, unsearchable riches in many ways. But we see that there is a bespoke revelation, there is a bespoke scripture that we will use for attendant problems in the communities. Beloved, the ability to lash onto these scriptures enter them, break them open, and use them as weapons in the advance of the Great Commission in your city is at the mercy of interpreters. A good example, we are looking at the, before us is a nation, and you see this nation, um, the nation is bedeviled. The sin has become a reproach. But you see, we have a ministry to secure obedience in this nation. We are not just going in the nation and complaining to them that they should change and trying to let them see that they'll go to hell. That's not the agenda. We must realize that we are, we belong to God and the nation lies in the power of the evil one. And God has given us the ministry of the stronger than he, the stronger than the evil one. We have spiritual warfare to deliver. We have spiritual warfare to deliver in the nations. The ministry of interpreter helps us to understand the strategy to deploy, to deliver effective spiritual warfare in that land. If it's a, a, a political issue, maybe by way of legislation, the city has become gay compliant. There is a level of interaction in the spirit realm with principalities, with powers, with the rulers of the darkness of this world, with spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly realms. That's the goal of the church. We must, as priests, fight, wage warfare for the soul of the city. And then after the warfare has been accomplished, we have a mission as as ambassadors to take the policy of Christ to the nations. Now, to, to deliver on this spiritual warfare, it requires that we carry out prayer works within these cities. We have time to have our programs where we are doing spiritual activities. We need the ministry of interpreters to deliver that. What format are we to deploy? How are we to engage this warfare? How what kind of fastings are we to do? Who are we fighting against? Which strategy are we deploying? Are we deploying the strategy of praise? Are we going to deploy the strategy of shouting? Are we just going to shout in the prophetic and bring down the walls of Jericho? <laughs> what, what strategy are we to deploy? The ministry of interpreters. How are we supposed to run it the ministry of interpreters. Without the ministry of interpreters, there will be no apostles' doctrine. There will be no apostles' doctrine. Apostle doctrine now holds the body of information that will pattern the church in a given location. A church ministering in Nigeria will have a different posture than the church ministering in Memphis, Tennessee. 
the church ministry to Calgary is a different posture. It will take a different posture, different from the church ministry to somewhere in the far flung regions of Caribbean islands. It requires interpreters that will establish apostles' doctrine for a particular city. Everything that the church has been ordained to do as a body to that city is spelled out. This is why we need the ministry of interpreters. Scriptures here says, let all things be done unto edifying. Let all things be done to build up the church. Because in, in the, 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 the addition of Psalms, doctrine, tongues, and revelation and interpretation, the church community is built. And it is in the strength and stamina of the church that Christ, the reign of Christ is demonstrable or demonstrated on that land. So we are looking at the ministry of Christ to cities. The gospel now we are preaching, it is to cities. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a testimony to the nations. The message that we are preaching, the, the influence that we are bringing should have city-wide impact. In fact, that's what God ordains for the last hour. There is salvation that he has planned to be revealed in these last times and you see we cannot talk about delivering on this potential if we do not place priority on fellowship the church began with fellowship it's a lifestyle of fellowship i want to look down through acts chapter 2 and i'll come down from I'll come down Woo. Okay Acts chapter 2 We can see that after that incredible um, salvation story was demonstrated from act from verse 12 down to the end we saw a lot of people the church community began to find the expression it says 41 then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls the church is just born here verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers so we are seeing the four legs of our table the church has a table apostles doctrine one leg fellowship which is what we're talking about the second leg breaking of bread communion breaking of bread another leg and then prayers apostles doctrine fellowship breaking of bread and prayers we're looking at fellowship today we are looking at fellowship. But you see the four legs, four cardinal legs, principal to the stability of the church. The church community must stay with these four legs. The apostles' doctrine. The teaching that has been revealed to the apostle that patterns the church in a given location. Apostles' doctrine. Fellowship. The, the inner, the, the, the relationship between inner believers that is expressed with outer participation with Christ and with believers in the furtherance of God's will in that city, fellowship, breaking of bread, communion. And this is one way we, myself, my wife and I, we've, let me say we've been lagging behind because we've not broken into this communion table. The Lord since last year have been telling us about the communion. The communion is, is something that the Lord put on our table for us to be 
to 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 he said as often as we do it we should do it in remembrance of him and we do it so that we can be one with him so there's a mystery in that communion there's a mystery on the communion table there's a mystery on the communion table as often as we continue in it we are demonstrating our oneness with god very important in the church arrangement all of us must have communion together in communion we can yoke ourselves into the newness that god has called us into there's so much that we can get from the table of communion and after the breaking of bread we're going to prayers prayers now is we want to pray the will of god we already know the will of god we want to get updates on our furthering of god's will very important here very 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 important here god has held this four things and you see uh, in subsequent um, lives i will shift from fellowship and stay with the apostles doctrine stay with communion and i'll stay with the prayers very important that we go through this but it is clear to see that this is the posture of the church assigned to the nation so the church we are looking at now is a, a, a church a gathering of holy spirit inspired god ordained scripture fulfilling community of judges and counselors of priests and kings that are assigned to nations to advance the reign of christ in the nation you see the definition of church i'll say it again and reiterate it for benefit of um reiteration just for us to know the church is the god ordained holy spirit inspired scripture fulfilling community so this community were in a relationship it's a community of kings and priests a community of judges and counselors my goodness they are assigned to nations to advance the reign of christ in the nations so this community is assigned to the nations they are supposed to move within the systems and institutions of the nations with the goal of advancing the reign of christ among the nations but to deliver that task down to our federating unit down to the local church down to our homes we have fellowship apostles doctrine breaking of bread and prayer as often as we meet there's a format for our meeting and the goal is to deliver on god's counsel among the nations on that note i want to um, um bring this to an end um i'll pause it today because the gospel never ends <laughs> so i'll just pause it but in this posture that god has ordained he wants us to see that it's until we get there the impact of his presence will not be seen you can see from there it says and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising god and having favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily such as should be saved very powerful expression in the early church this was the template for the manifestation it's not it was it was because this time it isn't anymore but allow me to tell you this is the template that we are returning to the lord has inspired my heart i tried to end but he told me no do not end he wants us to see the interpretation for the moment we have come to zion allow me end on this note <laughs> second samuel chapter five we have come to hebron we can declare here that we have come to hebron it's an interpretation and it should help us see that beyond all we have called religion beyond everything that we have done promoted in our ways our work that we have had god is calling us back to hebron um, chapter 5 of second samuel and verse 1 
Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are thine bone and thy flesh. This is a powerful scripture, but by way of interpretation, which is what I brought to the table today, we can see what the Lord wills to do with his body among the nations. Many tribes, all of us have been scattered into denominational Christianity, but he is gathering his own. Very important sign of the coming of the Son of Man is our gathering together unto him. There is a gathering together unto the Lord Yeshua, and it happens in a prophetic dimension called Hebron. And I learned recently that Hebron means friendship. So God is bringing us to the place of friendship where we are, co we are in co-participation with Christ and the believers is a place, another believer, I beg your pardon, is a place of friendship. Is a place where we are vulnerable with ourselves. Is a place where we are united. We share all things in common. That's the realm that God is bringing the church back into. That's where we have assessed. Is a realm where we have understood who we are. No longer are we Christians. We have become the very flesh and bone of Yeshua Hamashiach. This is the time where a people become the wife of Christ. We are wife because we are submitted. We are wives because we are servants. We are here to serve. We are wife uh, because we have discerned the Lord and we are mandated. We have taken the responsibility to court him. We have taken up the responsibility to nurture Christ. We have taken up the responsibility to feed him. We know his food and we want to do the Father's will. We want to finish the Father's work and we have come submitted to his all authority. This is where we are. We have come to Hebron and on that note, I want to tell you welcome. Welcome to Hebron, my listener. Welcome to the place of friendship with the Lord and with the believer. Welcome to the place where the Lord has ordained us to be from the beginning. Welcome. We have wandered away from there, but the goal is that we have seen the ark. We have seen the priests bearing the ark. We have received grace to change our position so that the Lord can welcome us all in Hebron. On that note, I want to just put a blessing, God's blessing on your heart, that the fields of your hearts have been tilled, aerated, they have been prepared, fertilized for the entrance of God's word. You receive grace to walk with the word of God's kingdom and the anointing to develop every insight that you are receiving. You receive grace to walk hand in hand with the Holy Ghost as he shows you great and mighty things. Uh, the, the will of God be done in your life. In the name of the Lord Yeshua, I have declared. And the house said, Amen. On that note, I would like to go, but before I go now, I want to show you these three powerful, powerful, deeply researched prophetic books that the Lord has enabled yours sincerely to pen down for the angel of the church among the nations this gospel of the kingdom the request for global dominance which is the first book basically bible prophecy and the second book is the message of the kingdom the lord broke the message of the kingdom into four there are four definitions of the message of the kingdom that the lord yeshua hamashiach preaches and it is in the message of the kingdom that eternal life is demonstrated scripture fulfilling life is deployed the scripture fulfilling life is dispensed 
because the believer receives the grace to be the word made flesh also and uh, the third book sheep and the goats we are seeing the consequence the impact of the preaching of the message of the kingdom the goal is to produce gospel church states christ compliant sheep category nations among the nations of the world god has ordained that as his church rises preaching this gospel of the kingdom we can take a stand against the final face of the beast that is ex being expressed to the nations in the post-COVID-19 era. We are seeing the rise of a coalition of, of kings from the East and they are going to practice, um, I want to call it social um, communism. Um, it's communism but it's socialism on an overdrive. What these people are planning to do, uh, they want to turn away the nations of the world from God and they want to cause the nations to depend on the machines. And that's why you and I must come to terms with this message of the kingdom. Because Christ compliant territories, they are territories that are conditioned on the deployment of a new technology. We will cash into the technology to the extent to which we understand, to the extent to which we preach, to the extent to which we teach this gospel of the kingdom. Age culminating signs will follow all that believe in the message that yours sincerely has been inspired to write about in this book. If you are tired of the world the way you see it, if you are tired of the system of the world, if you are tired of the way of the Antichrist, the way of iniquity, this book is a must have in your bookshelf. Please, I'll keep a link to this content. You want to buy it, you want to send it out to your friends and family who are celebrating Christmas, people are giving out gifts this period. This is a veritable tool to have in the library of your friends and your relatives. Till I see you again, beloved, shalom. Thank you, Father.